Don't touch that sidebar. You are listening to Dual Radio. So I played in a Yu-Gi-Oh! traditional format here recently, and you might be thinking, I've been playing for like five, six years. I have no idea what a Yu-Gi-Oh! traditional format is. Traditional format uses the current Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden and Limited list, but instead of banned cards, they get to be moved to limited. That means every deck can play fan favorite cards like Pot of Greed, Graceful Charity, and Delinquent Duo, but also have access to salt-inducing cards like Imperial Order, Shockmaster, and the Almighty Maxi. As you can imagine, it's not a very popular format due to high variance and just the sheer amount of FDKs that are viable. That's right, you not opening a hand trap means you get to watch this little guy summon a copy of himself from the graveyard 20 times and draw a card every single time he does it. That being said, you might be thinking, well, what's the best deck? Is it Cash Tiro with Diablosis back? Is it Tier with Kit Kalos? What about Magical Scientist FDK coming back to haunt you from the second grade? Now I will admit it was a smaller event, but I could imagine that larger events the results will be about the same. As you can see, Cash Tier and Terrellement were the two most represented decks, while every other deck only had one pilot. And there was only one true FDK getting third place, and they only lost to first place who was playing... Zodiac. Are you surprised? Now, unfortunately, I don't have any of the other deck lists that were played that night other than my own, but I do have that available for you, and I'm going to go through that and show you what I was thinking while I was building it. Crossout Designator, I assumed we were all going to be playing roughly the same card, so I felt Crossout was just going to be a really strong card for the entire format. Nibiru is really good against a uh, tier just you know because i'm going to be summoning a whole bunch of times because i'm trying to get in some really uh, janky extra deck stuff so i just didn't want to get nibiru so cross out uh for nibiru and nibiru just for going second uh maxi is probably one of the most powerful cards in the game so i wanted to play it being it was banned drolls really good against fdks and i just really felt like it was going to be a uh, powerhouse card uh finner is one of the Probably the probably one of the best going second cards right now, and it adds cash tier to element for me. Cash tier to element's probably the best legal three of to element cards, so of course I played it. Uh, Rhino Heart's at two uh, because Rhino Heart is standard at two, and I just didn't want to mess with that. Uh, one of each of the fusions, they're all at one. It's not like the one of's got bumped at two, so if I could play more, I would. One of each of the Millers and one of each of the Shufflers, those are pretty standard. Fairy Tale Snow uh, because it was banned, and I felt like it was generically good. It's a level four, which helps my uh, rank four uh, Xyz package, so I wanted to play it. Zephyros, another level four. Should all beast, it helps me get into Winda. Painful Choices, the first of my powerful band spell cards. I mean, just revealing tier cards. Uh, and then Should all beast, you're guaranteed that you're going to at least one of your fusions off, just as long as they don't get interacted with. Foolish Burials, at one. I wanted to play it just because it's a send one, it just but you're guaranteed to send it. Instant Fusion, because I can just instant fusion for kit. I played Metamorphosis uh, just so I could Metamorphosis uh, like a level four and get into uh, some of my extra deck uh, level four monsters. I felt that was going to be very powerful, but I never saw it. So Last Will is another one of those power cards. I was running my shufflers into bigger monsters so I could summon Rhino Hard. I could summon Murley off of this. I felt it was going to be strong, so I wanted to play Last Will. Potter Greed, draw two cards. It doesn't get better than that. Graceful Charity, draw three, discard two tier cards, activate both of them. Sounded pretty good to me. Terraforming, it added Planet for me. I only have Planet, uh, and then I am citing a field spell. I played Scream at three because it's a powerful mill card and uh, it triggers off of your opponent summoning things if they if you have a tier name. So I wanted to have it. I only played one Sulik just because I have a lot of other powerful cards and I just didn't have space to play more of it. And most of the time, standard lists are only playing two anyway, so I just wanted to play one. Felt like main deck and crime was going to be powerful. Kind of wanted that counter trap speed card, make sure that uh, my effects went off. Jumping into the side deck, we've got Nibiru uh, just as my third copy. Uh, I have two spooky dogwood just for time and just because uh, some of the FTKs burn you for exactly 8,000, so I just figured if I started gaining a little bit of life during the middle of their combo, they're going to have a harder time FTKing me. Harpy's Feather Duster and Heavy Storm. Harpy's Feather Duster only blows my opponent's stuff. Heavy Storm, I could have set Sulik or Scream and blown it up just so I could get more stuff. It's there for me just so I have it, just so I don't get subjected to back row. Two TTT because, you know, powerful card. It also says draw two on it and there's really no restriction outside of your opponent has to do something with one of their monsters. Delinquent Duo, I never ended up siding, but I wanted to play all three of the Trinity just because it is not very often you get to do that. So I just wanted to play them all. Call by at one, you know, if I could play more, I would, but I can't. So 
it was just there in case I got shifted. Uh, Super Poly, uh, pretty strong, especially with a s- extra deck band card that I have. Uh, I just felt Super Poly was going to be a good option. Mystic Mine, a uh, powerful going second card. You know, just my opponent sets up something like Ronga Miniad. Well, you can activate Mystic Mine, and uh, they just won't be able to do anything. Like, they have the monster, but they're just going to be detaching until you get rid of Mystic Mine. Uh, Vanity's Emptiness and Royal Oppression kind of go into that, I'm going to set up a board and then not let you set up a board, so I just kind of want to have those options as well. Now getting into the extra deck, we got Kaleido Heart, Rukalos, both at one, and the band Kit Kalos. Big reason why you would want to play the whole deck, so I... Uh, I'm glad I got to do that, and then I'm glad we had a format that I could do it in. Uh, Preta Plant, Dragostopelia, Garura, and Mud Dragon, all Super Poly staples, all Tier Fusion staples. So I wanted to play them all. You kind of have to play them all. Elder Anthony Norton is the second band card that I played. It's really powerful with Super Poly, and you could, say, have, like, Rhino Heart Metamorphosis into... Uh, Norden, and then you have two level fours uh, for some of your other plays. I just kind of wanted to play it, try it out. I never summoned it. Uh, Winda, because Winda is broken. I played Zeus, because Zeus is strong, and uh, I'd never summoned it, but I always wanted to have that option for me. Beatrice could have been changed for something. I had level eater in the main deck originally, so I could eat a level seven level, and then so I could overlay into Beatrice. Uh, I just never ended up doing that. As for one of my jank combos for this format, I wanted to activate Tullamai Attach Delta Rose on my opponent's turn, uh, activate that Ptolemyus and summon as a thought. So my opponent couldn't activate monster effects that turn. And I never did it because the one time I tried, it got Widow anchored. So you can't win them all. I wanted to have Time Thief Redor just so I had that option to uh, fusion summon on my opponent's turn. I never ended up summoning it. And the last of the jank cards that I played, I played Shockmaster. And not one time did I unlock the shock. Personally, I didn't want to unban all of these cards just so I could summon Kit Kalos, but I did have a pretty good time activating some ban cards. And uh, you know what? I wouldn't mind doing it again. Just as long as Shifter's limited next time, too. What deck do you think is the king of traditional format? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you for tuning in to Dual Radio, and until next time, I'm signing off.